My name is David. I'm the principal here at Chaska High School. Extremely proud to be here. Chaska High School is a fantastic place. We have wonderful students, fantastic staff, um, and do some wonderful, wonderful work. How many of you uh, parents in here are sending a student to Chaska High School, your oldest, the first time? All right, fantastic. How many of you are sending a second or third or fourth or fifth? So you've been through the drill a little bit before. Good, okay. And you might want to be looking around, first time parents, because we have experts in the audience. Um, how many of you as parents have an experience as a high school student? <laughs> yeah? Every one of you. I'm going to tell you this tonight. The high school experience that your kids are going to experience here at Chaska High School is probably a little bit or a lot different than the high school experience that you, you had. Think about personal digital devices in the classroom. You probably know your kids are already accessing information online in their op online uh, web pages and their online folders and you're checking information on Parent Portal. And we're talking about preparing students for a future that we can't even imagine yet. As a parent, you probably know or have been in multiple careers as an adult or you know your job and your career is constantly changing. We are preparing students with both the content information background that they need as well as a set of skills to be successful in the 21st century in a world that's constantly changing. That's our purpose here at Chaska High School and we think we do a pretty fantastic job of that. We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Keys to student success here, rigor. That's making sure we're presenting curriculum, courses, opportunities that are challenging and prepare students and connecting that with a relationship with staff and adults and support in the building that ensure all of our students can be successful in that challenging coursework to build those skills that they need to have in order to be successful when they graduate. Our high expectations and our mission is this. When you leave here as a student from Chaska High School, you will be prepared for four things. If you choose to go on to post-secondary education, you should be successful at that. We're giving you all of the skills, all of the background knowledge that you need. We also want to make sure that you're prepared for multiple career opportunities, that you're a lifelong learner, because your parents can probably tell you you're not going to be done learning when you leave high school or if you go to college when you leave college. You are constantly learning and we want to make sure that you have the skills to do that and value that. Ultimately, so that you can become a contributing member of society both locally and globally. How do we do that? We talk about four A's here at Chaska High School. One of the things I want all of you to understand and know is we are about excellence, tradition, community. I want you to repeat that after me. Excellence, excellence. Tradition, tradition, and community. Excellence in everything we do, and that's in these four things. Academics, repeat it after me. Academics, activities, activities. Arts, arts, and the athletics. We have strong tradition in all of those areas, and we create new tradition as new students come into our school, because we become a hawk community with all of those who've already gone through Chaska High School and all of those of you who are coming to Chaska High School. We strive for and achieve excellence, we honor a tradition and create new, and we celebrate the community that we become, and we do it in all four of these areas. Tonight's primary focus is around academics. I just want you to be aware of the other things that we offer as well. Here in academics, and we're going to talk about it tonight, when you graduate from Chaska High School, you have met the admissions requirements of the four-year colleges and institutions in the state of Minnesota. They are inherent in the graduation requirements that we expect of all students. So the English, the science, the world language, the social studies, it places the student in readiness to apply to a four-year college in the state of Minnesota. World language is a graduation requirement, and for you as a student, you need to know when we say there are 25.5 graduation requirements, you need to earn every one of those in order to participate in your commencement ceremony in 2017. So that is your target, and when you reach that target, you're prepared for what your options are after high school. Our academics include four areas of interest in our elective areas. Uh, Ms. Clark is our counselor and she'll explain that a little bit more this evening. You can see them listed on the screen, arts and communication, global studies, health sciences, human services, and STEM. And in each one of those areas of interest, students choose a program of study that ultimately ends in a capstone course. Capstone authentic learning experience that takes the content knowledge and applies it to a real world problem solving situation. So students not only learn content, but they learn a set of skills about collaborating together, identifying problems and creating solutions, and then implementing that into the world. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later as well. I said I'd touch base, oh, academics, rigorous courses. Uh, if you're familiar with some of these options, 
uh, fantastic. If not, we'll explain them more. Advanced placement courses, concurrent enrollment courses, which means we teach college courses here on campus. Project Lead the Way courses, articulated courses. These are one of the ways that we begin to blur the line from high school into college. These are options here, but they potentially earn college credit. So we allow students to begin to get into that world of college rigor, college credit, and potentially earn credits before they even go on to college. I said I'd talk about the other areas as well. Certainly, if you're interested in the arts, we have fantastic arts experiences. And those are in the visual arts, instrumental music, vocal arts, theater. And uh, we are a founding member of the, uh, the Arts Consortium here in Carver County. Activities, uh, depending on what your passion is, we have activities in multiple areas. If you're interested in service, we have uh, clubs and activities for that. Competition, quiz bowl, science bowl, speech, knowledge bowl. When you get a chance walking around in the commons out there, just observe in the circle of champions how many state championships Chaska High School has a tradition of in knowledge bowl, science bowl, quiz bowl, and some of the excellence that precedes you. And in athletics, 34 teams in 21 different sports. We have an intramural program as well, and we are currently in the Minnesota Conference. So, the agenda for the rest of the evening is to cover registration information, talk about graduation requirements, uh, give you a little insight to the high school schedule, the areas of interest program of study so that you can understand the capstone requirement and how those courses work, um, an overview of the registration guide. We have experts here from each one of our departments to talk very briefly about the requirements in each one of those areas so you fully understand that. And then uh, we'll conclude in here and give you the opportunity to spend time with our staff for the rest of the evening. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Amanda Clark, our ninth grade counselor, and she'll walk you through a good portion of the rest of the agenda. Thanks for coming this evening. Hi, guys. Good to see you. I'm going to switch it up and walk over here, I think. So every eighth grader by now, whether you're in a private school or any of the middle schools, should have received information from the counselors about registration. So they got a registration book and a registration form of how that's going to work. So if you have it tonight, that's great. If not, it's also on the website. And we're going to post this information on our website as well, the full PowerPoint. So some of these pages on here, if you are confused or can't remember it all, it's going to be right here for you. Um, the beginning part of our book really talks about expectations, opportunities given, how things specifically work in our school. What is advanced placement classes? What are Project Lead the Way classes? How does a GPA work? All those things are in the beginning of the book, right around pages, like from the beginning to page 16. So the most important page that I want, well, we'll go over, but the one that I've told all the eighth graders that they want to mark is page 16. So hopefully they came home and they jumped up and down and then they showed you, this is my registration book and we have to know page 16. That's going to be the graduation requirements that they need to be the class of 2017. So. This is our schedule. Most of them are already familiar with this. If they were in middle school at East, West, or Pioneer Ridge, they have the same schedule. We call this a modified block schedule. So on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, they go through all seven periods of class. Then on Wednesday and Thursday, they have block schedule. So we call Wednesday our even day. Go two, four, six, and eight. And Thursday our odd day, one, three, five, seven. These are times where people are maybe doing a longer lab, Maybe they're taking, doing a study review and then taking a test. So there's just different options for them to have a longer class period to go over material. So this is our page 16 blown up. How you look at it is, look at it through the columns. So ninth grade, it's going to lay out every class you need for ninth grade. This is showing English and world history. And you can see that all four years, we're requiring a world history in an English class. The rest of the bottom portion is to think about throughout your high school career. So math, we're requiring three years of math, including geometry, algebra two, and then they can pick functions, trigonometry, and statistics, or pre-calculus with trigonometry. So that's three years of math at some during their high school. They can keep going if they want to. We require at least three. Our world language component is two years of a world language of the same world language. So that's Spanish one or two. That's Chinese one or two. So it needs to be two years of the same language. Personal wellness is our health and phi ed component that's in one class, and we're calling it a personal wellness. Art, we're asking for at some point in high school to have one credit or two semesters of an art class. Capstone is something we're going to go a little bit into more detail. We have a nice video for you to show. 
And then the rest are electives, that they just go towards electives, towards the 25.5 credits you need to graduate. So the rest of the book page is, are really the descriptions. Are there prerequisites, courses that are required? What is being taught in a ceramics class, in an intro to engineering class? So it really gives you a description so you know what to expect when you're going into it. It's a lot to look through. So the back of it, in the back, there's an index. I think, let me see. Yeah, page 83. I should have this memorized by now. I've given this a lot. But page 83 through 88 is nice to look at if you just want to see everything listed. And it'll go by departments in alphabetical order. So if you're thinking, okay, we want to look at art, we really like art, on page 83, it's going to show you all the art classes and the page number you can find that on. So it'll tell you right away, page 44 is going to give you a description of ceramics. Okay? We're now going to pass it over to some of the departments so they can have an opportunity to tell you the things to expect in ninth grade and also some of the great opportunities. I think we're start well, we're starting with English. Where do we have an English representative? I think it's me then. I can, I can take English on. Well, yeah. So we can specifically talk about, I got this, we can specifically talk, English 9 is they do, the first semester is focusing on literature. So they're doing reading. They also do Romeo and Juliet. How exciting. The second semester, they talk, focus on oral communication. So they're doing speeches. Really fun speeches. I sit in on them. Sometimes I have even given a speech to the classes. Uh, we also have accelerated options, which are good to touch on. And one of these in ninth grade is called English 910X. 910X is a, the course that's invite only. So we look at some different criteria. We look at map testing, previous grades and courses, and from eighth grade, seventh grade, and sixth grade. And if you score high enough, it's on a point system, we send you a letter saying you're a great candidate for being in an accelerated English class. You have the option to say, yes, I want to be in it. No, I don't. So it is an invite-only class. And closer in the spring, we're going to send out those letters. If you have more questions about that, I'm happy to answer those after this as well. But so this English 9, 10x, you're doing all of English 9 and half of English 10 during ninth grade. Then in 10th grade, you're in English 10, 11x. You do the rest of English 10 and all of English 11. So essentially, by 10th grade, you've done English 9, 10, and 11. And you have some more opportunities to advance yourself in advanced placement classes. There are English electives. So we have intro to theater, and then we have some media specialty areas that are talking about maybe writing, so journalism, as well as media production, so being on air, on TV. Math is up. All right. Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, not accustomed to the microphone. Uh, my name is Tom Wynn. I'm here on behalf of the mathematics department. And you will find this uh, diagram right here on page 21 in your registration guide. Um, mathematics is not going to be a grade specific, course specific kind of a deal. So it might be uh, worthwhile thinking about, OK, well, where are we at this year? Where will we be next year? We're going to be kind of sequential in the mathematics department, you can see. Um, and you'll notice that, uh, let's see, um, students are going to be required to take mathematics courses through f either functions, trigonometry, and statistics. That's one course. We call that FTS. And another course, pre-calculus and trigonometry. They have those two different choices. Uh, one required math class beyond algebra two there. Uh, we do have a good number of advanced math courses, uh, and we encourage students to take uh, math courses throughout all four years of their high school uh, career. It's good to know that students will be taking the MCA, the um, state mathematics test in the 11th grade year. And let's see, what else we got going? A couple of cliff notes I made for myself. I guess the only other thing I want to add is we got a team of friendly math teachers We'll be hanging out there afterwards. If you've got any questions, any individual issues, we're happy to talk to you about it. Thank you very much. Hello, Corey Jensen, uh, personal wellness. We're friendly too. So, um, 
Let's see, we have a strong passion. Personal Wellness Department has a strong passion to teach our students uh, lifelong health and lifetime, lifetime fitness. And so you see that reflected throughout their educational career here at Chaska High School. Um, you have to take a semester of it throughout your whole 9th through 12th, which again, promoting lifelong fitness, which we really encourage. Um, Personal Wellness 9 is kind of an exploratory where it's, it's um, you can, look at different ideas like, or areas of activities such as um, team sports, individual dual sports, kind of just giving an introduction to all this kind of stuff where your, your student might have a chance to say, I really enjoy, um, it's something that I can do on my own but still be active or I really enjoy team sports or even I enjoy stuff like aerobics and conditioning. Um, once they get past that, ninth grade, now 10th and 11th, you get to choose where you really want to focus a little bit more on and that might be uh, more the team sports, and then all your activities in Personal Wellness 10 would be uh, at team sports, or you could choose aerobics and conditioning, or again, individual, okay? Uh, 12th grade then would then get into a little bit more of personal uh, assessment and your own personal fitness and applying it to, you, to your own uh, lifetime fitness uh, plan. Um, let's see here. We do a capstone, which is, uh, it's turned into now a sport management and a, a health licensure. So if your student really enjoys uh, fitness, maybe sports management uh, areas, they can start to do a introductory classes and then go into more intermediate. Some of the, our introductory classes, electives would be um, strength training one and also leadership one. That you can advance even more into leadership and sport management principles, uh, strength training two, uh, there's some also athletic training and health careers exploration. It's a great class where if you want to go into any of these areas, they do have, I think there's like 30 some guest speakers, they come in, they do um, field trips, just exploring all different health areas. So that is kind of options. And then the capstone, again, some examples in our area would be, um, you want to be licensed as a fitness trainer, you want to be licensed as a uh, a personal trainer, you want to do something in sport management, you maybe do an internship with a, um, local sports teams, the Vikings or Twins or stuff like that. So um, that's kind of in a nutshell. I'll be out there if you have any questions and again, we're friendly too. Hi, I'm Jamie Cornell. Uh, I teach chemistry and physics. As ninth graders next year, you're going to be taking physics. We went to physics first about five years ago, four years ago. Every kid that comes through Chaska High School takes physics as a ninth grader. We think physics, well, physics is a foundation for what's going to come after that. So it gives you a foundation about understanding the rest of the sciences that come after that. Tenth grade year is chemistry. Everybody takes chemistry. Eleventh grade year is biology. Everybody takes biology. There's a whole bunch of other really cool electives, so if you, if you want to do that, and we're friendly too, but um, those are <laughs> other, other things that you can do. Um, real briefly about the X classes, as Ms. Clark was saying, the X classes, everybody will sign up for physics for next year, just straight physics. So if you're coming to Chaska High School, you're going to register for physics. If your math scores and some other things are high enough, then you would get a letter inviting you to be part of the Physics X class. Um, I teach the Physics X class I have for the past few years, and then Chemistry X, it's a lot of fun. We go really, really fast, uh, and it's for kids that have not been challenged in what they've taken so far. So it's, it's out there. It, it, if you have a really strong interest in that, that'll, that's something that you will follow up on. Um, there are only three years of science that are required. I wish there were four, but there's only three. I'm sorry about that. Um, we do have lots and lots of electives that are out there. If, if you want to understand how the world works, we'll help you figure out that. Social studies. Hello, eighth graders and family and friends of eighth graders. I'm Larry Bachman. There's a lot of stuff you got to try to remember in one night that you're being thrown at you. So I just decided I'm just going to reduce everyone's anxiety and stress towards social studies. You'll be taking world history in ninth grade. 
Everything else is pretty much up there. If you have questions as you go through it or whatever, social studies department's back there. We're friendly to social skills as part of our name, so all right. Hi, I'm Kari Hurd. I teach Spanish uh, in the World Language Department. We're not nice. <laughs> yeah, do I? Um, you can see up there, those are the five languages that we offer currently, sign language, Chinese, French, German, and Spanish. Um, you'll notice that there's a two-year requirement for world language in order to graduate. It has to be two years of the same language. After that, we encourage you either to really, if you're really into languages, certainly to pursue upper levels. Most of our languages offer up through AP, which in our sequencing is typically around a level five. We, most languages run, run through four, and then their AP would follow that. Um, and then we also have a capstone opportunity, but it's not, I know there's probably been rumblings about where it's located. We partnered with the social studies department because they're friendly, they shared with us. And so after you finish um, your third year of a world language, you can capstone in that. And when they explain capstone later, that will kind of be more clear. So. Most of our languages offer intermittent travel experiences depending on which language you take. Um, some go every other year, um, so just kind of keep your eyes open for that. Most of the travel opportunities, no matter what language are offered, the travel opportunities are usually after level three. We really feel like that's when the students really have a, a solid enough grasp of the language and are fluent enough to at least be able to kind of hold their own in, in a foreign country. and you know, interact with a, a host family or interact with the natives as we're traveling. So, um, I think that's it. All right, we're gonna keep going. There is a lot of information, isn't there? I think the people that you guys are just starting to hear a snapshot are, uh, is really great. Speaking of our teachers, I think we have friendly teachers, right? It's a lot of fun. Not only are they excellent teachers, but they're great to be around, great personalities, and they create a learning atmosphere that's good to come to. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you is we talked about these four areas of interest. So we're saying to our students, we have these required courses for you to take. We know you need those. But now we want you to look at things that you're interested in. That's the exciting thing about high school is you get to start picking things that you like to do. So we're not going to make you take business class if you don't want to. We're not going to make you take, you know, uh, engineering class if you don't like that either. So here are the four interest areas. And then we're going to go a little bit into how this looks in the registration book. Nope. We're going to go to more specifically what the capstone is. I want to play the video for you first and then explain um, a little bit more about capstone, but this video does a really nice job to show you a snapshot. <laughs> High school registration, Chan Hassan and Chaska High School students choose electives from four areas of interest. These include arts and communication, global studies, health and social sciences, and STEM. After students complete introductory and intermediate courses within this area of interest, they choose a third and final capstone course. Capstones are opportunities for students to own their own learning. Um, capstones are self-driven, project-based courses in which a student would identify something that they want to really go into depth on and to learn about, to study. And there are different options for students to do this kind of work, but um, basically it is self-driven. Self-driven, project-based learning requires what we call 21st century skills and probably 21st century and beyond type skills. Those kinds of skills are um, critical thinking, uh, problem solving, um, how do I communicate appropriately in the community and between uh, the people that I'm working with? Networking skills, um, time management, um, being able to develop an action plan and follow through on that. Um, goal setting, those are all really important self-learning, self-driven skills that we want the kids to experience in a capstone course. Capstones are really a unique experience for kids. Right now we're doing marketing practicum where we're implementing these skills and you continuously learn just through experience. All the things we do, we uh, encounter so many obstacles that we have to learn. 
how to get around it. Problem solving is an endless skill that you just get better at. It's not something you actually learn, and that really helps. Uh, it's all about real life and getting out there. Um, during my capstone coursework, I learned a lot about time management, and it's really an independent study. So you learn a lot about yourself and how you work with, with time and with different fields. Um, it also teaches you a lot. You go more in depth about the different fields that you're studying and it's really real life application to what's happening in your community. The community is a critical partner um, because what the community can offer students is that authentic learning experience. Um, schools provide a great educational opportunity for kids, but they don't uh, always provide the authentic experience. And students um, just so much benefit when they see the application of their learning in an authentic situation. And so, um, I think that there are lots of opportunities for students to apply what they know out there in the community and in, in a real, authentic, real world situation. The teacher serves as both a teacher and coach, helping students to develop goals, to identify possible projects, and to understand what a successful project should look like. Students have full responsibility for their projects, but they are supported by teachers, the Career Resource Center, counselors and others. In my classes students have outside business mentors that they are able to contact, get help from ideas and advice. The value for students is they're able to take what they've learned in their prior classes. For example in marketing practicum they're able to take the information they learned in marketing one and marketing research and apply that to a real world situation. Completion of at least one capstone course is a graduation requirement. The goal is to ensure that every Eastern Carver County Schools graduate has experienced independent learning before they face that challenge after high school. So the big word that I heard in there is students get to own their learning. So they're picking something that they're interested in. So if you are interested in business, you get to really go further in depth and pick an introductory level course, uh, intermediate course, and then this capstone course. So these, there's 20 capstone courses available and all of them are something different. It's using your creativity. If you wanna do an internship, if you wanna do a project, if you wanna help, I know some students did the turkey trot a couple years ago. They helped organize that, market for that, and then promote that throughout the community. So this is an example in your book under, so there's four STEM areas. I'm gonna guess, I think this might be on page 37. I don't know, David, if you can confirm with me. But looking at it, if you look at the first one, it says media and publications. So this is an area of interest. And then if you see the third column over, it's a capstone courses. So this whole column is telling you any class that is a capstone class. And then the courses before that is the pathway you would take to get there. Am I correct about the page? 37. 37. So this is one example. And that, so the introductory courses and intermediate courses are there. The next slide has, when you go further into that section, it'll tell you the description and how exactly to get to the capstone. There might be a couple prerequisites before you have to get to the capstone course, and there are usually at least two, which is the introductory and intermediate course. These next slides are the other areas of interest throughout the book. I encourage you guys to really look through them, read through some things that you're interested in. This is global studies, so it has our world languages, business, and world history, social science components in it. Health and social sciences, has a biomedical field, and then food sciences as well as health sports and some more social science aspects. And our last one is STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The last thing I wanna point out is that final column says other advanced courses. So you can take a capstone course and you don't have to stop there. You can continue taking advanced courses after that in that same area. Capstones, one last thing before I hand the mic over again, but capstones are really great to start thinking about your freshman year. You don't have to have one pick necessarily your freshman year. Freshman year is time to explore. Take a couple things. If you like art, take art. If you like engineering, take one of those. Maybe take a couple. Maybe take a leadership class. So it's really up to you what you like and you're going to succeed in. When you're taking a course that you really are passionate about, you'll find that the coursework isn't work. 
it's fun to do. I'm gonna hand this off to, I'm not sure for my art people. I am Cassie Bernhardt and I am one of the um, art teachers here. We have a four general areas in the arts that you can take classes in. They're all listed up here. Um, there's a global arts and jewelry track, a ceramics track, drawing and painting, and design and digital art. Um, all of them have capstones in them and then you can also do AP. So um, I have a little sample of one of my global arts and jewelry projects. Um, we're doing knitting right now. Lots of really awesome capstone projects can come out of your art classes and um, you saw lots of really cool pottery being made in that video. So we do some really great stuff in the art department. Let us know if you have any questions. Yes, uh, Steve Peterson, uh, Engineering Technology. Uh, basically our department is divided up in two different units and uh, we're what we used to be called shop that's what some of you used to maybe took in your high school. But uh, if you look at the materials and engineering processes, that's kind of our basic course that gets into uh, woodworking, metals, and plastics. And they lead into then your traditional woods and metals classes. We also have some other classes that are semester classes like power and energy, architectural drafting, electronics. And those are pretty much topic specific to those courses. Um, at this point, that is pretty much it for a traditional shop. Everything else you see up here is shop on steroids. <laughs> We've got our Project Lead the Way classes are all bold there, and those are all, uh, you have the ability to get three college credits for those, and they're very in-depth, and they do prepare you for an engineering career. Um, as ninth graders come in, uh, as a department district-wide, we're recommending that you would take the IED class as your basic class, as a good foundation class because it kind of builds on all the other ones. And then POE we're recommending for your sophomore year. It's a little more heavy duty. Um, algebra two is a good prerequisite for that. Uh, very much into the math calculations and, but it gives you a really good all around view of what an engineer is all about. Um, the other classes, the computer integrated manufacturing, aerospace engineering and civil engineering architecture, um, are all additional kind of specialty classes also if you have a uh, interest in those areas. And then lastly, the capstone class. We have two capstone classes, EDD, Engineering Design Development, which is a full year project lead the way based class. And then we also, we have PDD, which is Project Design Development. They're basically the same class. Um, for the EDD, there's a few more things that are expected out of that because it is a full year class. Um, but the PDD allows you to take a semester class, and then if you have other things you would like to add in, that second semester that allows you to do that. <clears throat> One more thing about EDD and our capstones. You uh, saw Arlene Borner in the film there talk about integrating with the community. Uh, that's something that we really like to do in engineering. Right now we have four students that are working with Bill Monk, who is the um, civil engineer for the city of Chaska, and they're redesigning the sewer system in main Chaska, downtown Chaska down there. Um, I also have another student next year that is looking into doing an architectural program. And we will align her with a uh, architect and she'll go through the whole design process of a building. So real world learning experiences are really important uh, to the engineering department. And oh, one more thing. Uh, any of you that are really interested in engineering, we, we have another group called the First Robotics. And we have our robotic out in the uh, comments there, come out and check it out. Okay, so these are three classes that we offer that really get students onto the computers, exploring web page design, programming, and then we also have a computer and TV production where they do a show for us um, on a regular basis so people actually get to be TV broadcasters and make videos for us. Um. Ms. Swantek wanted me to point out that Child Development 1 and Nutrition and Foods are the only co courses that would be offered for ninth graders, but that they are prerequisites for all the other FACTS courses, so if your child has any interest in FACTS, they have to take one of those two, and that they also are the lead up into their capstone. They talked about the sequencing of that where it's an introductory, an intermediate, and an advanced course. So they would have to take either Child Development One or Nutrition and Foods in order to follow through the sequence. I can talk a little bit more about this. Kids who want to eat during the day take Nutrition and Foods. You get to cook and then you get to eat it. 
And then for child development, one of the great things, we had the early education program come over here, and I do know the child development classes, like Halloween, they helped them trick or treat, and it was adorable. They walked around to different classrooms, and they got to do that. So if you guys are interested in anything to do with children and developmental things, child development's a great thing, especially with our early education over here now. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tim Beckler. I'm the director of bands here. I also teach the AP Music Theory class. It's pretty simple. If you'd like to sing, sign up for the, either the Freshman Women's Chorale or the Men's Chorale. If you play a stringed instrument, sign up for the String Orchestra. And if you play a wind or percussion instrument, sign up for Contraband. Now, if you do, or if you would like more of a challenge, I do open up our, our top ensemble to freshmen to audition into that group. And I would just ask that you contact me either tonight or um, via email. That would be fine. Um, in addition, we do offer an option if you'd like to both sing and play your instrument in band. Um, there's a specific class. Sign up for ninth grade band and choir. And that's just for folks that would like to both sing and play their instrument at the same time. Or if you just want to sing, sign up for the choir. Or just play your instrument, sign up for concert band. I'll be out in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Cheryl Bow, and I represent business as well as my colleague Jeff Ridland here. And we're going to take team our short presentation to you. As freshmen, you have opportunities in high school, and one of those opportunities is to take a business course. Most of you have not been um, have that option as a middle school student, so that's what's another exciting thing about coming to our high school. You can take business courses where you're going to learn real life skills. We talk about skills to pay the bills, that's what we're talking about. Uh, learn some things that are relevant to you. Well, learn how to get a job. You learn how to interview. You will learn how to manage your money. You'll learn all about business. So courses open to you are introduction to business as well as our personal finance course. So assuming you have a wonderful experience, as our students do, you can continue in your high school career then, looking again at finance and marketing and eventually ending up in one of our capstone courses. Um, I'm going to have Jeff talk about our marketing and our DECA program. We have a well, excuse me, we have a strong marketing program and we have an extracurricular activity that's kind of, I guess we would say co-curricular. Uh, students involved in DECA are eligible as 10th graders. So if you're interested in taking business classes, maybe an introduction to business this year, or personal finance this year, and next year, sign up as a 10th grader for um, marketing one. And then as a junior, you would do marketing research and as a senior, maybe something like Capstone. So the marketing research and capstone classes, you're eligible for DECA as well as the marketing one. So you do sales demonstration, you get a chance to do uh, different activities and present your projects in front of judges. We have a district, state, and national competitions. Uh, most years we're around 45 students competing at the district, I'm sorry, 60 students competing at the district level, and then uh, close to 40 students are getting ready to compete at state. State's coming up March 3rd through 5th, and they get a chance to present their projects uh, to judges. Um, also, we, we're kind of involved in a lot of different activities. Uh, we do some fundraising activities like uh, uh, Mr. CHS. We do Chaska Turkey Trot. So students get a chance to do some hands-on uh, cooperative work with each other, and they get a chance to earn some money, and then always make them smile. So join DECA if you're interested in, in business. If you have any technology questions, I teach the web design and the uh, programming. So web design is a prerequisite, and you are eligible to take that uh, 9 through 12, but you need to take uh, web design before you take programming. Um, in web design, we do a little bit of JavaScript at the end, and we also do, um, so can we kind of get ready for programming. In programming, we use Java language. Good evening, I'm Erin Inderley Svoboda, Specialized Services Coordinator here at Chaska High School. Um, and our program is really based on the individual needs of our students and what our learners need to succeed. So we would use kind of two models, it's called pull out and push in, which means small group or team top models, and then we focus on these four areas, academic, social, emotional, organization, and transition. Um, and our students are all that access our program are on an IEP, so you would know if your student's on that program. 
But what I um, wanted to emphasize was to talk to your current IEP manager. I'm coming out to all the middle schools and working at individual team meetings, and then a lot of the eighth graders have seen me around a little bit, talking about our programming. And then that current IEP manager will work with me to get your students scheduled appropriately for the upcoming year. Okay. Last thing we want to talk about as far as academics go, or other services we offer. We do have an alternative learning center. We have an English language learning program for students who are coming in and still learning the English language. So they're taking a world history class, but with their peers who are also learning language with them to help give them assistance with extra vocabulary. And then we also work with the Carver Scott Educational Co-op and do some great classes as students are upperclassmen doing things like cosmetology, architecture, photography, criminal justice. So we're pairing up with them. Still with me? Okay. This is the other sheet that all the students got with the registration book. So should, they should have jumped up and down when they got home, remember, and they showed you these two sheets of paper. This is what needs to be filled out for the 11th and 12th for anyone who's at East, West, or Pioneer Ridge Middle School. Then the students should bring that to school on the 11th or 12th. So East and West Middle Schools, we're going back into the 8th grade classrooms on Monday, the 11th. And then Pioneer Ridge, we're going on the 12th. So send this back, 8th graders, take it with you. And you want to have it filled out because we're going to help you register on the computer. So the really important pieces on here, make sure you have your electives picked out. And then make sure you have alternate courses picked out, which are courses that just in case we can't get you into your first choice electives, those would be classes that you're okay to take too. All right, a few things in conclusion. As you think about transitioning to Chaska High School, in addition to the academics that we've talked about, just a few things that you want to know about for supports. Uh, Amanda Clark is our ninth grade counselor. She services just our ninth grade. So we have one individual who's focused on the needs of ninth grade and the transition to the building. If you're familiar with our building, the red house is currently our freshman house. So all of the freshmen coming into the building are in red. Their lockers are there, and their interdisciplinary teams of English, social studies, and science are located in that house along with their counselor and their house secretary for attendance. So usually about half of their day is located in one house with their peers, and then as they take multi-grade classes with others, they might move around the building. One of our transition uh, supports in the building is called Link Crew. We train juniors and seniors who apply to be part of this program to be mentors to our younger students as they come into the building. You'll receive more information about that in the fall, but all freshmen will be encouraged to come to school before school starts, meet with mentors, travel the building, move through their schedule, find their lockers. So we wanna do all of those things before school starts to make sure that your transition into the building is as successful as possible and we reduce that anxiety and the stress about being in the building as much as possible and our link crew is a great addition to that. Uh, many of you are already thinking about post high school. This is just what some of our students do. About 85% of students go into four year programs. 95% are going to do something, two year, four year program. And we, we recognized our students going into the military this year in November at one of our pep fests. We have students who travel initially. We have students who take a year off. We have students who go directly into the workforce or into training programs. In conclusion, Excellence Tradition Community is what we're about here at Chaska High School. You can find a place for yourself in, at, in one of those four areas at least, if not all of them. Again, tonight is about academics and making sure that you find the right courses, the right fit for you as you move into ninth grade. Um, some of the things about Chaska High School, you as parents need to know this, you need to share this, we need to feel good about our program because there are good things happening here. Bronze medal, US News and World Report, Washington Post, uh, top 10% of high schools, maybe technically top 6% of high schools in the entire country. And in the entire state of Minnesota, both Chanhassen and Chaska High School were in the top 10 schools on the MCA science test in the most recent testing. So those are some of the things that go on here. You may have the question, I'm going to guess at a couple of questions just to answer them. Uh, the registration guide is the same guide for Chanhassen and Chaska High School. We are one district with all of the same curricular and course offerings, so every student gets that same course guide and goes through the same registration process in both buildings regardless of where you're at. Um, I had a parent ask me earlier tonight about world language, specifically German. If you're interested in German, you may have seen a note in the registration guide, so full disclosure, you need to know. German 1 is being offered next year at Chaska High School, but we are phasing German out of our program. So when you start German 1, you'll be able to continue it, but this is the last year to start German 1 as a freshman. We're going to continue the other four languages, so just be aware of that. Um, and then there's often questions about the capstone courses, and we'll probably field those individually as we move out into the commons. So remember, if you're an eighth grader, your online registration starts on February 11th. 
Try to fill out that planning form and make sure you're bringing that back to school so when counselors are there to help you, you've got the information right there in front of you. One other thing I'd point you to, I think on page 82 in the registration guide is a four-year planning process. So as you're thinking about that capstone course that you want to get to, you can lay out your entire four years. What you're registering for is your freshman classes. But you want to do that in the context of what am I doing during my high school career and what is that end target, that capstone course, those high level courses that I ultimately want to get to. Um, public school students enroll by going to the uh, Welcome Center here at District 112. And uh, we build a master schedule in the summer based on all of your requests. So as 9th, 10th, 11th graders make requests to us, we figure out how many sections of everything we're going to offer. So it's really, really important that you do the best job to select the courses that you're going to be in next fall. Our registration guide is available online. I believe we'll be putting our PowerPoint presentation there as well. If you have other individual questions, you can always contact the school to talk to an administrator, a counselor, individual teachers. We'll do everything we can to answer questions as you go through this registration process. I truly appreciate you being here. Um, Chesk High School is a great place to be. Our students know that. You're going to find that out if you're not already part of our community. And parents, um, you're going to start getting phone calls from me, welcoming you to Chaska High School. Um, and I always say, Soar Hawks. That's part of what we are. That's part of what we want to do. Excellence Tradition Community, Soar Hawks. Make a great evening. If you have questions, please let us know. Thanks for coming tonight, everybody.